Captured for the first time in 2024, these images are not of space, but inside the human brain. Those star-like specks are suspected to be the first visual evidence of plastic inside our cells. Found in a recent study led by Dr. Matthew Campen, these particles were discovered in human brains, kidneys and livers, marking a chilling milestone in plastic pollution's reach. Since the 1950s, when plastic burst onto the scene as a revolutionary material, the amount of plastic on Earth has skyrocketed, with over 8 billion tonnes produced to date. And most of that plastic is accumulating in natural environments, breaking down into smaller and smaller fragments. So how are nanoplastics invading our bodies? Plastics break down, but they don't disappear completely. They become micro or nanoplastics. Nanoplastic particles are far smaller than even the cells of our body. So small they measure in nanometers, a billionth of a meter, or in this image, in micrometers, a millionth of a meter. This is the realm of large molecules and bacteria. A nanometer is about 100 times smaller than the width of a human hair. Scientists are actually still deciding how to define microplastics versus nanoplastics. But what we do know is these particles are everywhere, from the remote Arctic to human breast milk. Nanoplastics enter our bodies in many ways, but the biggest source is likely in what we eat and drink. From seafood to meat, fruit to vegetables, nanoplastics can be found in many of the raw ingredients we use to make our meals. It's present in the linings of our takeaway coffee cups, which release particles from their plastic coatings, and even in the water we drink. Nanoplastics are also in the air we breathe. Washing synthetic fabrics like polyester or acrylic releases tiny plastic fibers into the air, which can be inhaled. And breathing polluted air allows nanoplastics to enter our bloodstream and reach sensitive organs. What makes nanoplastics particularly concerning is their ability to cross internal biological barriers once they're in the body. The brain is surrounded by blood vessels, which supply it with oxygen and nutrients. The blood-brain barrier is a layer of cells between the two, designed to protect it from harmful substances. Dr. Campin's research revealed that these plastic particles can breach the blood-brain barrier. And even worse, the study showed that concentrations in the brain seem to be increasing much more over time compared to in other organs. So we know they're in our bodies, but the science on exactly what impact plastics have once they're there and how well our bodies get rid of them is still being done, so we don't have concrete answers yet. Recent research has linked the effect that nanoplastics have on the body as similar to those also associated with certain lifestyle choices and exposure to pollution. It's a condition called oxidative stress, which can lead to a number of chronic diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's. Plastics also carry harmful chemicals, you may have noticed some plastic bottles and containers say BPA-free or phthalate-free. BPA and phthalates are just two of over a thousand toxic chemicals known as endocrine disruptors. These harmful substances affect the glands in our bodies that produce hormones and interfere with our metabolism, growth, development and fertility. The impacts of BPA are something Professor Patricia Hunt discovered by accident in 2003. Professor Hunt was studying the egg cells of mice one week and they looked normal. A week later, she looked at the chromosomes in the egg cells and they looked all scrambled and disorganized. After searching for what changes could have taken place around the mice, she discovered that their plastic cages leached BPA, a chemical that mimics the hormone estrogen, causing significant damage to their egg cells. Other studies in mice have shown that exposure to BPA caused significant disruptions to sperm production, including a decrease in sperm count and impaired sperm motility. How applicable these findings are to humans is yet to be understood. There are two key things that are important to remember when it comes to our understanding of nanoplastics. The first is that the study of nanoplastics is in its infancy. And while scientists have yet to agree on even where microplastics end and nanoplastics begin because of their tiny size, it's that tininess that's causing scientists the greatest worry, because they can get deeper into our cells and have more surface area, increasing the potential for harmful chemicals to leach into our systems. The second thing to remember is that plastics, micro, nano or otherwise, aren't just a human health problem. 
they're a planetary one, building up in nature, disrupting ecosystems, and embedding themselves in the food chain. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video. And we love hearing from you as well, so let us know in the comments any thoughts or questions you have, and we'll see you next time.